Hello, Colin here with another Halifax Motorsport supported video. This month we're going to discuss clutches. I recently had an issue with my 07 ZX6R track bike where the clutch began slipping. I pulled the clutch out, everything looked fine, measured okay, some of the plates, steel plates were burnt, so I cleaned it up, put it back in, and lo and behold, the next weekend it started once again. So with uh, a, little bit, a little bit of consulting with some more experienced guys out at the track, uh, I was able to figure out what the issue was, and we're going to run through here in the video to show you exactly what I did and how I remedied the issue. First get your 8mm socket and then crack the initial torque off every bolt on your clutch cover. Once you've got each bolt loose you can begin pulling them out. And then once you've got all the bolts out, you can give the clutch cover a wiggle if it doesn't come off right away, just by pulling on the tabs that are around the clutch cover for that purpose. You can go ahead and gently tap it with a rubber mallet. That should loosen the cover off, so now you can easily remove it from the engine case. Now that the clutch is exposed, we can start removing the springs for the pressure plate. I've removed them here in a crisscross pattern just to ensure that there's an even pressure applied to the plate as we're removing it. Once you've got all the springs out, you can remove the top pressure plate, being careful not to drop the throwout bearing or the assembly. You'll see a little bit later in this video, the shim behind the spring for the throwout assembly was stuck to the output shaft of the clutch hub. So once, once I see that, I just pull it out, put it back on the throwout assembly to save that for later. And with that off, you can start removing the friction plates and the steel plates. I've removed them in the same order that they were installed. Not that it makes a huge difference because we're going to be measuring them anyway, but just in case we run into any problems uh, or we need to know the stack up that they were in the bike, we'll have that to reference later. There's a little shim that goes behind the spring for the throwout assembly. And we'll just continue to remove all the plates. So now we're going to inspect and measure the clutch plates in accordance with the service manual. It gives you dimensions for the friction plates as well as dimensions for the warpage on your steel plates. It also says here that if there's any discoloration in the steel plates or overheating to replace them. I learned this the hard way. Uh, last time I had this clutch apart, the steel plates were discolored and a little bit burnt. I cleaned them up with a scotch Brite pad and put them back together. The clutch lasted uh, two race weekends and started slipping again. So that's something some of the experienced guys have informed me of. As soon as they get blue or brown discolored and burnt, they're no longer good. Uh, I obviously learned it the hard way by putting it back together and then having to take it apart for a second time. So you can see these clutch plates on the edge are discolored and they were previously discolored on the surface but I obviously cleaned them up before I put it back together and there's not much for wear on them other than a few polished spots which is obviously not a good thing. A new set over here looks significantly better. You can see there's no discoloration on the edge. There's no polished areas, and these plates are in much better condition. So we're going to go ahead and measure the steel plates, or sorry, the friction plates. I already know which ones are good and bad, but it'll give you an idea of how to do it and see the difference between the two. So the manual says the stock size for these friction plates are between 2.72 and 2.88 millimeters, and the service limit is 2.5 millimeters. So we'll take our caliper and measure it in several different areas. First, make sure it's zeroed. 
So 2.66, it's certainly worn, but not beyond limit, 2.5 being the limit. However, I do have some over here that are slightly below. So there's 2.41, 2.44, 2.44, 2.44, 2.44, 2.44. And there were several that were like that. Also take note that these friction plates are not super soft, but soft enough that the sharp edges of your caliper can scratch them up. So be careful when you're using your caliper not to beat them up with the sharp end. So 2.70, that one's very close to, to new. And we'll just have a look to make sure that there's no frayed parts, that they're obviously worn evenly and then I'd feel comfortable using that plate again. But if they're out of limit, obviously throw them in the garbage and same deal with your steel clutch plates. If they're blue or brown or there's any polished off parts, like I've learned, just throw them away. It'll save you way more headache in the long run. When you're ready to install your clutch plates again, read the manual very carefully. There's subtle differences between the friction plates in this ZX6 anyway, that you need to take note of before you put it together. The friction plates, the first and the last one have a larger contact area than all the ones that touch the steel plates. So this is the one that's going to go in first and last, and these are all the plates that are going to go in between and grab on the steel. So this one goes in first, grabs against the aluminum. Then we're going to install a steel plate. Next, we've got two large washers. One of them is cupped, one is not. The non-cupped one goes on first. Then the cupped one faces away from the first one you would put in. Then we install the next friction plate, followed by a steel plate. And we continue to do this until we've got the whole clutch pack installed. Again, remembering that the last plate is going to have the larger uh, contact pads on it to rest against the aluminum. With all of your clutch plates installed, you can go ahead and install the last portion of your clutch hub. We've got our throw out bearing here. This has a spring and a small washer. The spring slides over first, followed by the washer. That pushes into the center of your clutch. There's then a steel washer that goes on the back side of your aluminum clutch hub, and then your clutch hub goes on. Takeaway from this is that although a lot of parts and components on your motorcycle can be removed, refurbished, cleaned up, put back together, and then work absolutely fine, the clutch isn't one of them. I uh, learned through my mistakes. I first took the clutch apart, everything measured fine, nothing was warped, just the plates were burnt. I cleaned them up, and like I mentioned before, two weekends later, I had the exact same problem. So once they become burnt, they're hardened, the metal's hard, and it's not going to hook up with the... Uh, the friction plates as well as it used to. So if you see anything wrong with them, just throw them away and put some new parts in there.